The fans are filing out of center stage here in Atlanta, Georgia, after an explosive ending to our broadcast for Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Ringside, I'm Tom Hannafin. He's the Drama King, Matthew Raywald, our post-show coverage. Well, we got to start, first of all, with what just happened between Nick Aldis, the Impact World Champion, Alex Shelley, and Leo Rush certainly picking his spot. No kidding, Leo Rush here in an Impact ring. I'm excited to see it, but I'm a little worried for anybody he might want to cross. Yeah, we're going to dive into what happened between those three and Chris Saban, especially a little bit later on. But there are a lot of big headlines that came out of this broadcast tonight on Access TV. Let's first talk about the huge match that's going down at Slammiversary. That's Saturday, July 15th, live on pay-per-view, Fight TV, and DAZN internationally in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. That night, Scott Demore and PCO will battle Bully Ray and Steve Macklin in a tag team match. And we learned it's gonna be a special enforcer for that match. Oh, that's right. The NHL legend himself, Darren McCarty, who's proven he's he's no stranger here to us in no. impact. We, we saw him a couple months back, and uh, he apparently didn't have enough of the chaos and destruction that can happen here, especially when people like Bully Ray are involved. Well, I think Scott Demore understands what Bully Ray, what Steve Macklin are capable of, and hell, Bully Ray doesn't ex exactly like Darren McCarty and oh, vice no. versa. So oh, no, I'm no, very no. curious to see how that develops. Also, regarding that matchup, next week we learn PCO is going to be in a two-on-one match against the Good Hands on Access TV. Scott Demore, while he's not the acting president of Impact Wrestling, was able to pull some strings and get his monster in action. Yeah, yeah still, still uh, pulling some of those strings behind, behind the scenes. There, we're gonna the Good Hands. I mean, they're just. They're asking for it. Yeah. They literally were. I mean, I think they wanted the match with Scott. They did to want be it with fair, Scott. Yes. Did not think they anticipated that little switcheroo. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. And also, speaking of things behind the scenes, who knows what Trey Miguel put into play? Because this evening, Zachary Wentz returned to Impact Wrestling, backing up Trey Miguel in his rematch for the X Division Championship against Chris Sabin. Zachary Wentz, the Rascals. Reunited. I, I, quite frankly, I love to see it. I've, I've been very much aware of what Zachary Wentz has been up to the last year or so out in the independent scene all over the wrestling world. He's an incredible athlete, but I think he's got a huge chip on his shoulder. And what better way to prove who he is than reuniting with his rascal brethren in Trey Miguel? I can't wait to see the antics, whatever the hell these guys get up to. They're better than ever now, too. That's the thing. When they were first formed in the Rascals, they were just getting their feet wet. Now they are both, in my mind, veterans of the sport. They could tear this whole place up. Yeah, the Rascals potentially up to no good here in Impact Wrestling. When we return, we're going to dive into the situation between Knockouts World Championship opponents come Slammiversary, the champion Deanna Perrazzo and Trinity, her matchup earlier on this evening, and also what went down between Rush, Shelley, Saban, and Aldis. On July 15th. At long last, it's Shelley's time! The reigning and defending Impact Wrestling World Champion, Alex Shelley. My daughter, my company, my generation. The former world champion, the national treasure, Nick Aldis. I'll let you in on a little secret. Oh my god! I'm winning the Impact World Championship at Slammiversary. Slammiversary. Tickets are on sale now. Our post-show coverage continues here in Atlanta, Georgia. Earlier on this evening on Access TV, we saw a first for Trinity. For the first time ever in her career, she went one-on-one -on -one with a male opponent in Jay Vidal. And frankly, Jay Vidal has been messing with Trinity since against all odds. This has been playing out over a number of weeks, and Trinity took care of business, beat Jay Vidal, but then it was the aftermath that continues to come up with Shaw, Evans, and Vidal. Yeah, I think almost more importantly, we expect that from them, yes. right? Like at, at this point, you expect Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans to come out of nowhere and drop somebody in the ring. What was the more interesting moment was we had the Virtuosa, the Knockouts World Champion, out here with us on commentary, yes. who had shown a lot of surprising, quite frankly, over the last few months, mutual respect for her Slammiversary that opponent. That was a two-way street Trim as well. Yeah, very much. So when that beatdown was happening, I mean, the virtuoso, let's just say, took her time in getting involved, which some may throw a little shade on that, but my my feeling is, is like, you know how I feel about the virtuoso. Yes. I am always in her corner, but quite frankly, the reality is we are now only weeks away from Slammiversary. Huge, one of the biggest Knockouts World title matches we've, we've had in years. Deanna Perrazzo knows that. 
it's time to start doing a little bit away with the friendship, a little bit away with the respect. You are still going to be opponents at the end of the day, and I think that just shined through tonight. And especially, Deanna parrazzo has got to worry about the Australia Down Under Tour right. later on this week. She has a defense against Giselle Shaw for the Knockouts World Championship. If Shaw wins, then she will be added to the matchup at Slammiversary for the Knockouts World Championship. It would be a triple threat, Shaw, Perrazzo, and Trinity. So there's a lot of factors at play in that situation. Now, there was certainly someone who came to play earlier on this evening. Leo Rush had his first match on Impact Wrestling on Access TV. We got a taste of him in Impact, at least. Sure. At the end of March in Los Angeles, Multiverse United, only the strong survive. Had a great match that night against Kushida. Oh, incredible. And he looked very, very sharp earlier on tonight against Jack Price. Didn't surprise you and I one iota. We've known Leo Rush for quite some time. However, what was a bit of a surprise was what went down later on in the evening. Nick Aldis had basically said he was going to make a statement to the Impact World Champion. Alex Shelley demanded that Shelley not be at his level in the ring, but in the stands. I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to expose you at Slammiversary. And there's oh nothing you can God, do about it. Just shut up. And then obviously things broke down. And Chris Saban came out to protect his, his partner, uh, in, in Alex Shelley. And that's when Leo Rush picked his moment. What did you think about that? I thought it was very interesting because in a lot of the time you see something like this go down. It, it looked to me, and I think to most people here, Nick Aldis was not aware that was going down. No. This, this was not some scheme like it often you see in a wrestling ring. This was not that. But Aldis was plenty happy to, uh, to accept the assistance. And I think to what you said earlier, I think Leo Rush saw his moment. Again, we, he thought, he probably thought like the rest of us, they're all gonna think I'm done for the night, I've had my match, I've made my impression, and he knew that nobody would be expecting the bad child, nobody would be expecting Leo Rush. One of the oldest adages in wrestling is that when you show up in a new place, relatively new place for Leo Rush, you go after one of the biggest bad. It's like prison, Tom. <laughs> you go after the biggest guy in the block. But you go after an Impact original. Absolutely. You go after the record-setting nine-time X Division champion in Chris Saban. That's not going to be forgotten, but Leo Rush picked his spot tonight, and also the situation between Aldis and Shelley continues to intensify on the road to Slammiversary. We cannot wait to get there two weeks from Saturday, July 15th, live in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Thank you so much for joining us this evening here on The Post Show.